I'd like to talk uh, for a minute about an issue that's getting more and more attention. That's the issue which scientifically is called stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, also called the chemtrail issue. Are you aware of it, and would you be willing to talk uh, about, about it candidly with us today? I'm very aware of the chemtrail versus contrail controversy. And um, as far as I'm concerned, it's an open and shut case. Uh, I have been watching the development of uh, jet travel from its very beginning. I used to live near the Los Angeles airport. Remember when the first jets came in and landed? Wow, they made a big noise. We never heard a noise like that before. And we used to go down and sit at the end of the runway and watch these jets come in and, and take off uh, because it was a novel experience. I've been watching jets all my life when I know about jet contrails. I've watched them. They, they're vaporized uh, moisture, ice crystals, and they get out there in the atmosphere and then they uh, effervesce and evaporate and then disappear. And you can see them. The plane moves along and the little white trail follows right behind it, and usually about 10 or 20 lengths of the plane or thereabouts, and then it's gone. And you can still see them that way, by the way, once in a while. So there goes a contrail. These other things we're talking about are not at all the same phenomena at all. These planes go by, and they billow out this white smoke, and it covers the sky from horizon to horizon. It doesn't dissipate at all. And they crisscross each other. And you see this thing cover this, the sky and turn it milky, and then people start having trouble breathing, and then you hear stories about the, the aluminum and barium, deposit, barium deposits that they're picking up and the residue. And you put it all together, and I don't see how anybody who's got their eyes open and their mind open can come to any other conclusion but that somebody is spending a lot of money and effort to spray the planet. The question is, why? I have my own theories, but I hope that there will be some good investigative reporters go out there and get us the answer. I, have, I know that whenever it's finally discovered, and it will be, the people who are doing it will undoubtedly say, oh, well, we, do it, we did it for you folks. It's for the greater good of the greater number. Mm -hmm. It's for the society. It's probably to prevent global warming. Or maybe it's to inoculate people against some kind of a dreaded biological attack. We can't go around shooting everybody in the arm, but we can spray them and save their lives. You see how good we are? We're doing it for the benefit of society. I know they're going to, whatever it is, they're going to say it was for your good mm -hmm. or mine. Well, they, surely when it finally comes out what is being done, they will try to defend it as though it was some kind of a public benefit being done. Mm -hmm. It's for you folks. It's for the benef benefit of society and mankind and all of that nonsense. I, I've noticed that um, the, the spraying appears to be mostly in NATO countries. Mm -hmm. I've seen it here in the United States, I've seen it in England, I've seen it in Scotland, um, I've seen it in Canada, and I've had reports uh, from people who live in France and so forth. Mm -hmm. But that, if that's true, and I believe it is, I have never heard any exceptions to it, then that's a clue, isn't it? There's a grouping, there's a political grouping here of some sort. It's international in scope. It's not just an American phenomenon, it's international. And um, anybody that wants to investigate that, I think, has to take that fact into consideration. They're going to find a political grouping and a political motive here. But in my humble opinion, it's not in your good or mine at all. I don't know what it is, but we'll soon find out.